good. In 1998, on the eve of the Commonwealth Games, Justin Crawford, the captain of the Australian boxing team, was removed at the 11th hour with what seemed little to no notice. For the last 23 years, rumours and innuendo amongst the boxing fraternity have lingered, but to this day, no one really has any definitive idea of what actually happened. Uh, in this episode of Boxing Deep Dive, Justin tells his story. So, Justin, mate, great to see you, and uh, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. Uh, good to be on Boxing Deep Dive, mate. Thanks for inviting me to talk about you know what happened. Now the, the, we spoke before. You, you, I know there has been some um, some things in the media, and I know you put some stuff on on social media yourself. But um, I think this is probably one of the the only times where you've actually done an, a, an interview, an online interview about what happened. And uh, and I will sort of preempt this by saying I was actually part of the the team that went that was supposed to go with you to uh, Kuala Lumpur in 1998. And Apart from seeing a few things online, it really um, I'm still a little bit at odds of, of uh, what happened because I suppose from from a team member's point of view, um, to backtrack, we actually got on the bus the morning to go to the airport and um, our captain's missing and uh, we all sort of looked around, shrugged our shoulders, what's going on? Of course, we all had you know bigger things in our mind, but um, to this day, I'm still not 100 percent sure what happened, which is why I'm really keen um, to get you on, mate. So. I thank you again for that. Just, just to um, before we get into it, Croft, I just want to you know go over your history because if you're not familiar with you as a as an amateur fighter, um, then you're not a boxing fan because you know nine time Australian champion, uh, three different divisions by the way, which is pretty unheard of: middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight. Nine international gold medals, four, Olympic. Rep- what's that, mate? Four division. Four well, division was it? Four divisions. What was the other division? Middleweight as well. Wow. As well as junior. Amazing. <laughs> Olympic representative, 1992 in Barcelona, 1996 in Atlanta, the Commonwealth Games uh, in 1994 in Vancouver, ranked world number two overall in 1993. Um, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, an amateur record of 123 fights, 98 wins for 48 KOs. So an amazing record there, mate. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Lyndon. Um, I uh, had a crack, mate. You did, mate. You did. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about some of the best Australian fighters ever. And, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of the amateurs don't actually get a get a say in it because uh, of the word amateur, I'm guessing. But, uh, mate, in, uh, in in true boxing fans' eyes, mate, you're you're one of the greats. So, mate, just, just to backtrack, I know you started back in Tassie back in, I think, the late 80s. Um, mate, and as I've just yes. rattled off your, your, your record there, we, we get to yeah. after... After the Olympic Games, the Commonwealth Games, all that sort of stuff, you make it to the captain of the team. We're all set to go to Kuala Lumpur. I think we're actually on our way to Thailand for to um, put the finishing touches on the camp. And as I said at the start, you were gone. Mate, go back to where all this started and, and try and shed some light on, on what actually happened with, with your eventual removal from the team. Okay, so... Um, on, so from the trip from... When we went to West Samoa and we had... Um, Went to West Samoa and then we went to, um, I think it was, uh, no, it was, it was West Samoa, where I remember I lost a really close, dodgy decision. It was, could, could have went either way, but the, the, the guy from Samoa won it right, won, won the fight. And from that from that point, from when we got back from, from to get home before we go on the training camp, we, um, I, I went out the night before with my, my girlfriend then but wife now I went out with her and we had people call me up and say they want to um, do do these neuropsychologist tests and you know um, and I said yeah fine I have one of the tests you want I'll, I'll you know this, this was the psychologist from the institute sport they they said to me we need you to have these tests because we've had a few people up and say they're a bit worried about you and uh, about your mental health and that kind of stuff. And at the time, my, my septum was being crossed my nose. Yeah. And it was making my speech a bit funny and stuff. And I said, oh, I have whatever test you have, want me to have. Um, I'm totally fine. And I said to them, I said, my nose is you know, funny because of you know what happened on this kind of stuff with the boxing. Anyway, so um, so when I got back from um, Vanuatu and that, I, I uh, went out with my girlfriend there, but wife now. For, for a drink that night because it was their last last night before going back and going to camp and then going mm-hmm. over you, going 
to Thailand and all that kind of stuff. So I went out and had a drink and I had that these nurse psychologist test the next day. And uh, I don't tell her, I still to this day, I don't know why I went out and got a drink. But um, still, still this day, I don't know what's going on in my head. I was thinking, I don't know if I was thinking I was invincible, unbeatable, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on in my head. Anyway, I went, the next morning I woke up with a little bit, little bit of a hangover and um, I went and had these tests and I failed them miserably. miserably. And so a few days later, um, we would go on the training camp for the Commonwealth Games. All of us turn up to down this year's sport, and I I um, go back to see the neuropsychologist or the psychologist at the issue of sport, and the guy who wanted to tell me that he was worried about me, he wanted me to have these tests. So I went back to him and spoke to him. He said, "Mate, and we've got the test back." And I said, "Oh yeah." And he said, um, "Mate, um, it's more more like you got brain damage, and you you know, you're not allowed to off the take off the team." It was that. That was, that was my boxing career over and done with, but uh, that's how he told me. He said, so, no, no. So, um, how long before the games, mate? Because as I said, like, I must, unless I'm missing something, I mean, it's 23 years ago, but we really had no inkling about what was going on. Did you know, was it pretty much just the, like the day before, the month before? When was it? Because I have sort of seen that it was... Uh, I think it was I think it was about two weeks before, because I remember, I think Richard Bell still had a fight at yep. Coogee Bay. So he had to fight at Coogee Bay, or he had, to do, had to fight there for some reason to test his hand, or some or other. I think, I think that, was a, that was going on. Yep. Anyway, I, I think, yes, yeah, so I think it was about two weeks before, two weeks before we were set to go away, kind of thing. Mm. Two weeks before we were set to go over to, overseas. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe. It were wasn't. You, yeah. Were you at the camp? You you were at the. I remember the. Uh, yes, as I said, I maybe maybe I maybe I should have had the test because I, I thought you were there right up until we left. But so it was pretty much two weeks before. No, no, wasn't no. It? Yeah, no, I think what what I remember is um I remember um, I think it might have been Richard Roll. I'm pretty sure it was Richard Roll had a fight or something. To make sure his hand was all right, you know, because he was thinking about his hands were bad or something. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Anyway, and, yeah, and then, because I remember being at those fights, putting the ring up, where, when I should have been in training, when I should have been at the of sport. Yeah. Because remember, I had a, I had a boxing ring business back then as well, so I, uh, I ended up been doing that, being there doing that, and it should be like at the game, I think, or, you know, or training. Well, he might have been kept back probably a little bit. Mm. Maybe, I'm not sure. He might have been kept back a little bit, and he probably flew off, he might have flew off the, for some reason, I thought it was like the next day, I mean. Yeah, he was flying. Well, we was flying away or flying to to Malaysia or something to first training camp. Yeah, oh, or Thailand. I can't remember. Because there was, it was um, a long time ago. But anyway. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was, it was, yeah. So my, yeah, you know, I had the test and they come back with it saying your brain damage and that kind of stuff. And I said, no, I want a second opinion. Can you give me a second opinion. Mm. And you know, I hoping to join the. You know, I think I told you I'll, I'll, I'll meet you over there. I think because I, you know, mm. I, I think you, I think you just went off the train camp, and I said I'll meet you over there, kind of thinking that you know if I sit the test again, that'll be okay. And, you know, because I'll be able to have a hangover, hangover will be over and done with. You know, like I said, so I went from because when I had the first test, it went from brain damage, and then when I had the second test, it went to brain injury, and I said. They're two different things. Brain damage means permanent. Brain injury means, I think, you know, I think it means you're injured, you know, you have like a headache or something. I said, by, you know, another week or so, I should be fine to go. Why can't I go? I said, no, you're off the team. Because it was, yeah. it was um, uh, word afterwards that there was uh, that it was an eye injury for starters and there was a talk about some sort of mysterious illness that you, that you got. So, so at the end of the day, it was just those tests. It was those tests, man. It was those tests. Mm. So it was those tests. I mean, yeah. later, later on, like when I, I was still, still, still mucking around sparring and stuff like that, and I was sparring this Irish boxer was over from Ireland, and he was we was training at our gym, yeah. and um, he got me a good shot in the eye, and my eye went a bit funny. So the next day, I went went to the doctor. I said, "All right, I had to catch treatment from that." So that was like about that was about a couple of months later. So that's how this eye. So I kind of 
put that as the excuse. You know, a bit, a little, about a year later or something. Mm. So no, with the whole no, thing made no. out, the coach was obviously Bodo Andreas back there. Did he have any any say in this, or did he just really just go along with what the doctor said? He's the one who wanted me to do the test. He was hoping that I was going to fail the test anyway. He was a prick to put, you know, put me forward to do the test. You know why? You know, you know why this was. I remember we. I remember we were training, and I stopped and I said, "Why are we doing these exercises?" And he said, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" He forced me out of, out of the training camp. I had to go out. You know, in front of all you boys, he screamed shit at him, screamed shit at me. He told me to leave. I will not leave. I'd stay. I'd stay right there. And I said on the side and watch the train camp and I ended up helping him train you guys, uh, train mm. step back in to help him train the guys. And then I remember straight not long after as soon as he, um, the boys went went off, he said, You should be coached, you shouldn't be you should be boxing, you should be coached. Said, Mate, I will be when I when I you know, when I retire I'm gonna be coached. But, you know, and then you know, next in a couple of weeks later I'm buying him these tests and he's telling me that you know, well the institute's supposed to tell me you're off the you're off the boxing team. It was with the Bodo sort of part of it too. So it adds another layer to it as well because you you sort of remember back then that you know we were on the team when Bodo first came in, and it's fair to say that he he tried to um, you know I suppose stamp his authority and he's you know make an impression first of all, and we and we copped it because I do remember that. And um, so it's fair to say you, you had a bit of a rocky relationship with him, and I think we all did. I remember it was Robbie Peden as well. I think and Hussey Hussain and. You know, they just turned pro and said, stuff Robbie. this, but we were, we were stuck there. Robbie had gone pro. He'd gone pro by now. Mm. Robbie wasn't. No. Robbie it was, um, Hussey was. Hussey was there. Uh, Richie Rolls was. Then that half, the Pete and pro by then. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah. So, it was just dodgy, mate. Yeah. yeah and it was... Yeah, Did you... I played my heart, my ball, I ball for two, I ball for months and months and months, and you know, I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, what did wasn't so well with my life or lay. You know, and I went back to doing my, because my, my my sponsor at the time, he um, bought me a boxing business, so he, I took that over and started doing that. And then there was a guy from Balmain who was my kind of sponsor as well, who gave me free membership and all that kind of stuff. He said, why don't you come to a class? And I said, there's a lot of people around me. My wife, well, not my wife, my girlfriend at the time, which you met, you know, I think in, when we were in Liverpool, when we yep. remember Alison? I do, yeah, Alison, yeah. So yeah. I was here. <laughs> but Alison and her friends, that I remember when we were in Liverpool, you know, before 96 Olympics. We are there, so um, we, 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 got, we got back together and we were, we were together, and we're still together now. We had two that's girls right. and... Man, oh, that's so, awesome, yeah, but, yeah. But if it wasn't for her, mate, I don't think I'd be here. I swear well, I was just going to say that, mate, because, you know, you, you're probably one of the most um, dedicated fighters I think I ever fought with because you had that tunnel vision of it was just boxing and nothing else. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to hear what you had to say today on this episode because um, I can imagine that mentally it would have been extremely hard to have pretty much a rug ripped out from something that was your whole life at the time. Mate, well, from a really red red headed kid, mm. as I went to five different primary schools. I got picked on all the time, all the time. I didn't I couldn't fight my way out of paper bag. Mm. You know, I started boxing at the age of twelve. My life changed, man. My life changed. You know, once I started boxing, my life my life had completely changed. I wasn't this red headed kid, freckly red haired freckly kid that got picked on. I was a kid that you know it was the king of burning and. Going on to better and bigger and better things, moved to Hobart and you know, become the Australian champion that year in eighty eight, my first junior and everything was, you know, mm. you know on the way that I wanted to go, you know, I thought it was gonna be first let me gold medal. Once once I remember once I saw I remember watching Spike Cheney fighting for gold. Eighty eight fight I was a fifteen year old kid. Um my record I think I had they, they beginning that year. I fought Jamie Nicholson at the beginning of the year. I lost to him. At you fought Jamie kilos. Nicholson? Yeah, 57 kilos. And then I went, started, then I fought 61, 62. I got up, got up to 67 kilos. I was weighing 65 kilos when I was fighting 67. Jeez. And that was that, within a year. I mean, they were putting that, put that much weight on that year. So, I, so Jamie was my last loss as a junior kind of thing. So 
But then, um, then I won my first Australian title that year, '88, and uh, at Worldweight. So I fought Jamie Featherweight and fought one Australian title at Worldweight at the end of the year. Yeah, did as that, a junior. And the- the late great Jamie Nicholson, of course. So, because I, I I remember you, because I, I think we're we're the same age. I'm forty eight. We are, and um, I, I remember um, seeing you at one of the boxing tournaments in Melbourne, and you had the hair was this big mohawk thing, and this big thing of mane of red red hair, this big mohawk, and and I still remember to this day thinking, who the hell is this guy? But you beat the hell out of whoever you fought anyway, so you could obviously fight. Yeah, no, I remember I went to Melbourne for a few times. I fought, I fought Preston Town Hall for the um, 1989. My, that was my second junior title. Yeah. And then I fought, um, at, then uh, my, my last loss as a junior against um, a good guy from Victoria. Um, what's his name? Uh, he was the second, he was second senior. He, he lost it, lost it down over in the Australian titles. Was it Sean Tunnel? No, no, it was, no, it wasn't no, Sean. It was, it was later like, on, I think. Yeah, Sean was later on. Yeah. It was um, it was anyway. Um, uh, who was my last? It was my last loss. Was, uh, I think it was my last loss as junior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was a senior at the time, and he was number two, no, number two Australian, and I was Mr. Junior, and junior. Mm-hmm. Oh, just just you know, just fifteen, 15 or 10, 16. 16. Yeah. No, Amazing. Remember, so I remember maybe- then my my. My best career is my, my best thing was when I first turned senior. When I, I fought um, in Adelaide, yep. I had three. I had three win, uh, this was my first my first year senior. I went straight into, I broke my hand beginning of the year. I had my first senior fight. Then I um, won this, my state title against a guy who was a pretty experienced guy, Belvin, who um, was Australian champion at one point. Beat him at points, and then we fought again a couple of weeks later. Beat him a lot, lot more easier. Then we went to Australian titles. In um, Adelaide, the first senior Australian title, three fights, three knockouts. Yeah. Knock and then I went in my first, my first year, my first, my, my first international trip was in the Philippines. I went over there, one goal, my first trip, and uh, two, three fights, two knockouts. You know, mm. I, was, I was on fire. And, and then you were never, fight. never really in danger of um, losing your spot. Where after fight. that? Mm. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, so it was 10 fires, 10 for the for 90, and then five KOs, and I broke my hand. The beginning of the year, put me out for about six months. Mm. And I still got 10 out of 10, mate, for the year. <laughs> That's what I say. Uh, That's awesome, mate. Just, just to backtrack a little bit to when um, this all went down with the, the Commonwealth Games thing. So, did you end up actually getting an opportunity to have a, a second test? It was pretty much you're out, yeah. you're gone. I had the second test, and I yeah. said, Brain damage to brain injury, which are two. Oh, sorry, you said that. Yep. Yeah, and uh, you said, you know, no, it means the same thing. To me, if you look up that damage and injury, there's two different things in the dictionary. Why? Well, that's not the same thing. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. It's okay. A bit emotional. Mm. Just talking about that. I mean, no, I, I, I just can, I can imagine, mate. Did you have a conversation yeah. with Bodo afterwards? Afterwards, it all happened. Did you talk to him? Uh, last time, last time was. Spoke to Bodo was about the year, last year, I think it was, or was that the uh, last time I've spoken to him since? I know, I think I spoke to him a few times after that. I think, I think he, uh, there was, I was saying a few times when I was putting the ring up and all that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I just believe what I did and all that kind of stuff, thinking of the brain every all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I don't want to, you know, destroy my coaching career, so I never really said much to him. I mean, I, but, uh, as time grew, went on, I started to get really upset about it, started to get angry about it, so I started writing about a few things about it, and Facebook stuff. And I was at a um, course, uh, at, uh, EBA coaches course, yeah. and um, I was there, I was there, um, there doing the IB coach course, and Bodo was the instructor, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I... And he, he uh, was talking away, and his voice was getting to me. His voice, you know, it must have took me, took me straight back to, straight back to training camp when he, you know, his dudes, everything went back to training camp, and his voice and his annoyance and just everything about him just, you know, got to me so badly. I, so I had to, I got up from when, when we had the break. I had to say, oh, I've got to go. I can't be. I can't be. Mm-hmm. I can't be into this course because that prick there. 
doing it, his condo, because he kind of said something to me regarding Kuala Lumpur. I said, he said to me, I remember that guy who was in, uh, who was doing something rather we joking around, something like that, Kuala Lumpur, and I said, mate, if you remember, I wasn't on the team. He didn't, he didn't say nothing, he shut up, shut up, he turned his head and walked away. Mm. And from that point, I, was, I, was, I could not stay there, I could not do anything, you know, I just, I had to go. My, my heart, I mean, if talking to you now, I start to get teared up about mm. it. I just don't understand why the, these picks do to me. You know, I said, I said, to, I said, to this year's sport, I said, let me compete at these Commonwealth Games. Then I'm going to, if I don't win the Commonwealth Games, I'm going to, I'm going to retire, it, retire anyway. I said, so all I want is, you know, I want all I want is to win my last Australian title, my tenth Australian title. And, that, and then I'm going to retire my own call. Please let me do that. And I said, no, mate, you're off the thing. Let me just break my heart. It was a big one for you, wasn't that, getting that 10th Australian title. So I think, uh, was it Darren Obar, I think, had 10, didn't it? I know you just wanted to, to break that record. No, no. He had nine. No, he had eight. He had eight. Eight, okay. But he had eight seniors. He had yeah. seniors. And I, I took a couple so. But he won eight straight. And I, won, I was going to won seven straight. And then I... I had 996, I didn't fight, I didn't do it. I was going to go, but um, I was too mentally screwed up from when Levjack smashed me. Yeah, it was a, a tough one. Well, I've got to say, yeah. mate, I, you know, after we all got back from Atlanta, I know you, all you guys went off and got fat and partied and stuff. I actually went back and um, went to the Nationals that year, so <laughs> it was uh, a little bit different not having all you oh, guys there. If I uh, wish I did. I mean, uh, well, at least I would have my 10th Australian title. I wouldn't give a shit about it, you know. I, didn't. I think I, I was didn't. the only but one. I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, go ahead, mate. I, uh, I remember when, um, in 92 Olympics, I went from 875 kilos to 87 kilos in three days after I lost to the Russian, right? So we, we, had, we had an eating competition at Super Bowl on the most weight. And I, I flogged everyone. I the closest you. person to me was... Six kilos, and then in '96 Olympics, I went from 75 kilos to 98. 23 kilos. Wow, that's. <laughs> I still remember actually at the Atlanta Olympics. I, I think from memory they had did they have five or six McDonald's in the village? And I think we we pretty much hit every one in uh, in one day. I think. Uh, we would we would have made that. I remember that we would have hit everything. Every I was eating everything. And then a big year, and you know, it, was, it was crazy. <laughs> oh, they were fun times. Well, just just on that, mate. I mean, um, I know we've we've covered the you know some of the dark times in the sport for you, but geez, the career you've had with teammates like you know Robbie Peden, Darren Ova, Rick Tempiri, Hussein Hussain, Justin Rousel, the late James Nicholson, Swanee, of course, yours truly, mate. You you must mm -hmm. still look back and um, and just look at your career as an amateur and. Yeah, you must have a lot of fond memories there on top of, you know, unfortunately, start time as well. Uh, mate, I do. And, and, of course, Lennon Hoskins as well. You know, yeah, of course, mate. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't think I'll be up there with those guys. But, I, I mean, it was really a, a golden yeah. era uh, for Australian boxing. I know we, we didn't have all the, the backing and the funding and, and the amount of trips and all that sort of stuff. But to think of imagine, what... Imagine if we did that. Yeah. if we did have... I mean, we, 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 I have no doubt, you know, even with, um, in 1991, they won two bronze medals, you know, and that wasn't beaten until, when was it, a couple of years ago or something? Yeah, was it Stefan, was it Stefan Scriggins or? Yeah, Stefan, Stefan and, um, Stefan and, um, James, uh, no, Justin Rouser. Yeah, well, I must have been, I was, I was pretty happy when I finally got to the age to challenge for the Australian team and Stefan Scriggins was gone because he was a, he was a great fighter back in the day as well, so. It was awesome, mate. Southpaw, awkward, yeah. yeah. Get, me, get me high in every time I was high in my chair. Yeah, as as Jamie, Jamie Nicholson did, you know, yeah, he was, was, yeah. all class, mate. Yeah, he all was, class, mate. Just, Rouse was an amazing fighter, mate. It was absolutely amazing. I mean, Robert Peen, mate, look what he went, what he proved what, what, he, what he had. He won a world title. Yeah, no, he's, and we'd love to get him on at some stage for chat, uh, Bomber, because um, I think he sort of gets um, not mentioned enough when it comes to um, the, uh, you know, great Australian fighter, okay. amateur and, and, and pro. But, mate, just, just on the... Um, these days, so you said you're married now with Alison. I think, from memory, daughters are Sophie and Ali. 
Yeah, that's correct. I forgot that right. So, mate, these days, what what what's uh, what takes up your day? What what's on the agenda? I'm a personal trainer, mate. I'm a personal trainer. That's all I do. I train people all day. That's all you so do. do? How many how many would you train a day? I do, I do what? I, I see about 30, 40 people a week, and I, you know, I spar- I still muck around sparring people. I was still glove work with people. I, we, what I do is I do 12 rounds of boxing. I've got specific combos that I teach people. And I've got this actually coming out on a nap soon. It's called Champ by yep. Justin Crawford. Watch Champ. out, okay? Okay. Yeah, Champ by Crawford. And so, um, yeah, so um, I'm towards teaching people how to, you know, box and how to punch properly and how to, all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I'm, le- I'm learning more, and I'm, I've learned so much by teaching mm. than when I was fighting. It's just unbelievable. I mean, people just get to see how punches are really, how fast you can really throw a punch, and mm. if you've got really correct technique, and if you've got, you know, the right balance and the right, you know, I didn't know none of this stuff when I was fighting. It's like, you know, fun and you are you now, mate, you know. Oh, I bet. Well, yeah. just, just don't. If I don't. Well, just on that, have you ever thought about making a run for, you know, national coaching on it? Because with all due respect to a lot of the coaches out there, none of them, and I mean none of them, have the pedigree of, of guys like yourself. So have you ever contemplated doing that, or getting involved in the national well, team? So as I've said, I've gone to a few of the things and Bodo's there. So, so he's the reason why you're not interested? Uh, mate, I, I just can't go. I just can't, I just can't see. I can't look at him, mate. I just lose the pot. You know, I just, he broke my heart, mate. And I just don't like the prick. But he's like still involved uh, at the national level, is he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's in charge of something. Oh, he's in you know, coaching or something. Or he's around somewhere. Well, I, I think he, I think. Um, but, um, but, I mean, the, you know. I think you're young enough, mate. You've got a bit of time on your side. And I think Bodo's, you know, even told the coach now, um, what's his name? Uh, Kevin um, Smith. Yeah, Kim Smith, you know, they, they've, you know, I saw them sit by side and they saw me and they didn't, didn't, they didn't even acknowledge me, mate. Well, they don't even acknowledge you being a fight now, mate. You know, people don't give a shit. But, so. but doesn't that frustrate you? Because it frustrates me in that, with all due respect to some of the coaches that they've, they've got out there, let's be honest of it. Let's be honest. A lot of them are just tracksuit collectors. Let's face it. That's that's what a lot of them are. Do you th- do you think that? I mean, I get frustrated when you've got people like you, yourself and me and saying the same. And you know, I'm not sure Bomber would be interested, but does it get a bit frustrated? As I said, oh, I do when you've got people that have been at the level and know what it takes at the level and they're all out there doing what you're doing now which is a great career to still be involved in boxing but they've got all these resources at the ready and they and they won't use them and it's all just a is it a popularity contest or who's kissing whose ass jealousy. i mean who, who knows it's a mate's jealousy i don't know it's just I don't know what it is mate um, don't know mm. can't can't because i mean I, I, i've want... got no ambitions to do it so i can speak freely but it, it's it, it, as I said, it's frustrating that um, a lot of the, the, the trainers that get the, the gigs, I'm sure they're nice guys or, or girls and they, or women, and they've all you know they've all got a, a solid background in boxing. But geez, we've got some pretty solid people out there like yourself that would just be such an asset to the team. And I'm talking the Richie Rolls and all these guys as well. Um, I mean, you just got to rattle off the amount of names out. Even professionals like Jeff Fennick and Barry Michael and these types of guys are all and Jeff Horn are all sitting out there and. Just not being utilised. Yeah, I just don't understand it. Yeah, it's no, imperial. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I understand that's the way it is. I mean, you know, trying to keep us out of things. I think they think that we don't know anything because we've never won anything. You know, mm. All the European coaches are the best kid coaches and uh, some like that. Well, know. let me just... A little bit of a stat. Let's go back to... And it was great that um, Harry Garside recently won the, the, the yeah, bronze medal. Fantastic, awesome effort by Harry. And I'm really hoping to catch up with him in the future. But yeah. when Spike Sheeney won silver medal back in 1988, with basically no funding, you know, you're paying for your yeah. own trips, paying for your own track suits, all this sort of stuff. Um, you only really got the Olympics or Commonwealth Games paid for. So... Back then, we won an an Olympic um, silver medal, and you fast forward, what is it, 33 years, and we still haven't progressed past that, as good as Harry Garside was, and all that funding, 
that's gone into it, all the overseas coaching and all the rest of it's gone into it and resources, we're no closer to a gold medal than what we were 33 years ago. Yeah, yeah, no, but hat boxing has been tough. It has. Well, well, what was the next question I was going to ask you? Where do you see the state of current of amateur boxing at the moment? What's that? Where, where do you see the, the state of, of boxing at the moment compared to when we were around? Oh, it was just, um, it was, you know, the USR sprinting up, all that kind of stuff. You know, you never, you remember USSA used to be the one country. When, when Spike won, it was one country, man. Yep, it was, yep. But what was probably. Justin there, we'll see if we can get him back. Yep. Stronger, you know. Mm. Uh, so I think it's a lot stronger than that. You know, even Brazil, look at Brazil, Brazil got a couple of medals. I mean, what the heck? They've obviously got a good, good when they have the Olympics or something. They had people boxing, they had the person there or something, I know, but they they weren't, they don't do all right at the Olympics this year as well. Mm. Yeah, I remember mean, yeah. when we were around, it was, no, no. you know, Cuba was probably the, the biggest one, and you know, and obviously Germany and USA and Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, what? When we were fighting? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Mm. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't as split up as it is now. No. Yeah, they had world titles, you get all, all the countries and stuff like that. Like when we went there, it's world titles, and you know, there's all the countries. But, um, Olympics, it's like, you know, split down, that was fine, no, no, it's mm. just different, I think it's just different. Yeah. No, a lot stronger competition now. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And what did you think of um, Harry Garside Olympics, mate? It was a great performance, wasn't it? Mate, I was so happy. For he's a great guy, mate. I reckon he's, good he's kid. awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, he's I love awesome. it. Love, love it. Like a real lovely kid, you know, Good, good coach from in Victoria. I mean, yeah, Brian the beard. Yeah. Um, what's yeah, you know, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's awesome. So, you know, it was. I was so happy for him. Yeah, it was, mate. What um, so, if you did have something to do with um with the you know amateur boxing, mate? What um you know what would you do to improve not only um you know Australian boxing but just you know boxing amateur boxing in general, or more specifically, you know, the Australian team. Just technique, mate. Just slowing things down. What technique? I mean, but for me, teaching what I do now, now teaching normal people, techniques. But people don't concentrate on you know hands up. Everyone's hands are down. Everyone's hands up. Come back to their chin. I mean, I don't know what goes on. I mean, I mean people's hands are you know. I mean, like pain. I can't you know I can't knock people like pain and stuff like that because that's just how they fought. You know. Mm. But I mean. And techniques the main thing. I mean, what I mean, I teach things like footwork and that kind of stuff. And footwork's the most important thing. We haven't got our footwork, got nothing really. And I've not, I've noticed that I've only picked that up the last ten years of training. You know, footwork's the most important thing mm. by far. If you get in, you won't get, you won't get a punch. You won't. Well, nothing works without, does it? What's that? So I mean, you know, and speed, speed's another thing. Speed's the most one, another most important ingredient. Focus on speed, and you know, and I've all, from teaching people, I've learned how to transfer the weight. Now I'm used to transfer the weight back and forth, and so I decided, you know, all this kind of stuff I can't remember. Never learning you know, this stuff, you know. Mm. But, you know, it's like just small, fast, short little moves you can do without even seeing it happen. You know. Mm. Again, what do you, you think know, about man. the whole um, these days now with, uh, and I know they've got the professional um, scoring and all that now, but this whole thing with the with the pros being able to have, is it 10 pro fights now? I mean, what, I for one, it ceases to be amateur yeah. if you've got professionals even if they've had one fight, but what, what do you think about it? I don't like it. Mm. I don't like it. Just, you know, but, you know, but things, I suppose things have got to grow so they're trying to match it with the other... Um, Contacted sports like you're seeing. I suppose they're trying to think of something to pick their profile of it, profile of it up. I suppose, don't know. Mm. And, you know, it would been awesome to have ten fight profile come come do. I mean, come I, back, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, it's it, it just you know, yeah, it, but it, I, we had no no one fight. So it would been awesome to switch over to pro, a couple of pro fights. Mm. You know, because I fought, I fought some pros. I fought, you know, Garth Cousins doing it being lively. 
pro champion. I fought Mark Ritiro, who ended up being yeah, middleweight. Good fight. Yeah. Uh, middleweight, super middleweight, and whatever champion. You know, I fought. Um, also fought Chris Bird, who was a, yeah. from USA. Yeah. He became world champion, heavyweight world champion at that. And I fought Sven Oki, you know, one who went undefeated. Yeah, he beat. Of course, he beat old Anthony Mundine. And then I mean, I fought some. You fought some, um, the best, mate. Who, who, speaking of that, who was the best? I know you had, was it Garby and um, Leb, Lebvedev or whatever? Who was the, who was the, the, Leb, the, Leb, the Leb, Lebzak, I mean, Lebzak was just a beast, mate. Mm. Yeah, man, I just could not, I couldn't, I didn't get near him. He smashed me. But Garby, I got close. Yeah. You know, it was close. It was up until the last round. He did me in the last round. Um, another person, um, I, you know, I was fighting good against Mario. Was you in the... Um, English uh, Liverpool Cup in '95. No, I went in '96. Yeah, yeah, I went in '95. Year before, before we, we went, uh, for, uh, for a guy called uh, Mario Vet. Yeah, he was six foot. It was massive, right? Big tall guy. And he used to fight like middleweight, but he switched over to middleweight. And he was the fight. He was there with Spenock in the same. Spenock was in the same team mm -hmm. as him, in the same weight division as um, Mario Vet. So I, I had to fight Mario Vet. He knocked me out. Cole knocked me out. Cole, I mean, first time I beat him, I, I hit me the left uppercut. I went down, I got back up, and I was out. I was gone, right? <laughs> and then he fights Sven Oki in the final, but they obviously just pulled out and just, mm. you know, Sven won and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. But, you know, and it, I fought Sven in 1992, and this was in 90, this was 95. I think Sven went to 96 and then he turned pro. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention um, before as well because it wasn't just the Olympics and Commonwealth Games. You went to the World Championships. I remember in Sydney '91. We obviously went together in Finland '93. You did, did you go in '95 as well? Yeah, went '95 as well. Uh, that was in Germany. Germany. That's so before the Germany. Well, I was over there for a month before the German one. Yeah. Well, my sponsor from here in Sydney sent me over to Germany for a month. Yep. And so I had to go because we, we had this contact over here, over in Germany, who was here based in Sydney for a while with us. So we were training at our gym. So yeah. we had a contact there. He, he sent, took me to this gym, East German gym. I was about a month before the Australian team came over. Mm -hmm. And what that did to me, I mean, it, it helped me, but it made I wasn't, wasn't training with the German team now, I was training with the East Berlin side. So, I mean, I was training with the, you know, I was training with the, junior, with the juniors, not the seniors, you know. So, you know, for my boxing, I improved, you know, I learned, I learned a lot from it, but at the same time, it mentally screwed me up. So, when it, when, when it comes to the draw, the titles, I drew on um, Bulgaria, I think, which was a, um, which was a, in, which was a European country, and mentally I was beaten before I got in there for some reason. I was, you know, for, you know if, because I saw also how well they get treated, Germans, how, how well they get treated, yeah. how good, good they get looked after with saunas and spas. And, and not like when we were at we our mates. We this all happened at junior level. We were no, treated not, no, pretty much as outcasts. Senior level, it's happening at junior level. And I'm thinking, if these guys, you know, <laughs> Was screwed up, mm. so it wasn't well, it wasn't the best thing to do. do yeah, yeah mate. Yeah, so that's, you know, then I got so I'm not and then um, then I had a month off, and then, uh, I remember. Uh, oh, I, I had to go work on all the stuff. So I was, kind of learned in Germany and yep. then my next competition was the um, it was President's Cup where I won gold you were there I think for sure President's Cup in um, yeah yeah I was there yep yeah. um, I won gold yeah. there and then I, you know, I won in 94 do you I um, the Australian Australian titles in Hobart yep then we had the Australian titles in Hobart and then we had the um, Oceana and that was it in the Olympics Mm, that was the only right. competition we had you know, within six months. You know, much all, much at all competition coming up to the Olympic Games. I, um, we didn't get treated good at all, mate. 
I still remember the training camp for the Olympics, mate, when yeah. we were um, pretty much what on the beach up in Cairns, and we were, our training was sparring with the locals at the local gym down the road. It was not the ideal lunch, preparation. Lunch. I mean, how the hell are we going to do that? <laughs> I mean, how? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the ideal preparation. That's I mean, it's, it's, yeah. We're sparring each other, yeah. each other, bashing each other up. Yep. And they, um, you know. And expect to win medals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is, mate. Just and, you know, Arthur, go ahead, mate. Arthur's saying, my boy Arthur's just sitting back rolling in the money and saying, we've got no money. <laughs> well, Arthur's probably, Arthur, Arthur's probably counting the money for his own bloody wallet or, you know, you know, bloody doing whatever. Well, the money was going somewhere, wasn't it? But with the, um, yeah. with the, all the old teammates, mate, do you, um, do you still keep in contact with them at all or, or these days or? I thought that my teammates, when it was down your, down your thing, when we, we caught up with the um, reunion thing, what we had. How many years ago was that? Oh, that sounds like, I think it's the last time we... Yeah. Uh, that was, was that? 2016, I think it was. So, 16? Yeah. 16? Yeah. That's a 20-year thing we, we met up with each other for. Down your promotion, was your promotion one? Yeah, it was my promotion, and um, your, your promotion one, yeah, yeah, with the uh, Maloney yeah. boys. So, I'm actually thinking about doing a uh, a 25 year mm-hmm. online and uh, reunion if we can, mate. We might get everyone on uh, online and see if we can all reminisce about the good old days. That'd be awesome, mate. That'd be awesome, yeah, that would be awesome. Why we talk about Maloney boys, when I do that. Kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, mate. Yeah, okay. and um, we're hoping to have them on as well. They're, they're great young talent. And do, what do you what do you think about the talent these days, mate? Do you keep sort of track of the the, the pro scene at the moment? No, I don't. It's like uh, I've lost all heart and thing. I mean, I, I, I hope this gym out once a week, and that's about it. Yeah, but no, yeah. don't at the moment because it's COVID. Mm. Yeah, it, of course. Yeah, lost. Yeah, you know, my work and my work and stuff like that, and yeah, you know, just too busy with that. And my girls, and you know, uh, my girls are pretty good sports. So, yeah. You know, oh, that's you know, great, mate. Well, uh, of course, I suppose. I think I just like myself. <laughs> so well, that, that, that you've um, you've at least you know you've, you've got some some lot of good memories to yeah, go with um so, with this sort of bad patch of your, your career mate it's a, it's a shame that it ended the way it did but i think if you if you focus on you know all those uh, achievements that you made as uh, as an amateur mate um you know i think you got a lot more that good than bad yeah. so mate i uh, just wanted to yeah really appreciate you catching up um yeah. to talk about it um hopefully it's got a few things off your chest as well and as i said i, I really wanted to know uh about it as well because i was a little bit in the dark but really appreciate you being on mate And mate, I appreciate you let one know, wanting to know and let me let me come on the show, mate. I very appreciate it. It's awesome no right, show. I hope, hope to have you on again, Thanks. hopefully with a 25-year Atlanta Olympics reunion. Yeah, yeah it sounds awesome. You should do something, definitely. Cool. Leave it with me. All right, Croft. Um, yeah. Really, again, really appreciate you being on, mate, and, uh, and all the best for whatever um, comes your way in the future. Thanks, champ. Oh, don't forget my champ. My champ will yep. be out very soon. So keep yep. an eye out. Champ by Justin Crawford. Well, we'll keep an eye on it, mate. Keep an eye out. It's going to be 12 rounds. It's going to teach you 12 rounds of, of singing much. Right, Thank so you. Take so care, so mate. That's just C-H-A-M-P, champ. Uh, champ, champ, champ. Yeah, C-H-A-M-P by me, by me. Justin Crawford. Dumb. And another thing, one other thing... I was on a film clip a few, a few years ago. You should check that out, too. Yeah, hey, what's that one? The Lazy, the, the lazy as um, the film clip's called um, Be The One. Ah, I think I just yeah, had that playing when we were talking song called before. Mm. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. it's got, yeah. 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 A bit about my career and stuff like that. Nah, awesome, mate. It's my and story you know. behind the song. You know what I mean? The song's not about about me, but it's my story behind the song. Okay. Well, if you um, the song's this. Well, yeah, mate. If you want any more information on you, by all means, um, look you up because there's a there's a heap of videos on YouTube and that with you. So if you haven't sort of seen a lot of uh, of you, I uh, 
encourage you to do so. But thanks again, mate. Really appreciate it. And um, let's catch up soon. Yeah, you too, mate. Love you. Love your work, you too, mate. mate. Take care. That's right.